Once upon a time, there was a berry bush, which produced the most magical fruit. One day, a young girl was passing by, and she decided she would taste the berries. As soon as she ate them, she felt her nose and ears expand, and a slight itch in her lower back. But what amazed her the most was the smells of sheep and pigs and chickens from a mile away. She arrived by a pond and was shocked to see that her reflection was forever changed. I became a wolf for 100 days. If some of you want a tutorial on how to download the mods I use, you can check out my Instagram. I have been quite sick this week and I still am so I'm really really sorry if you can hear it throughout the video. The shadow that lay before me was unfamiliar and I couldn't even see above a block. I was now a wolf ready for an adventure. I started off getting some pumpkins before wood, I'm not sure why, but from my diminished perspective everything seemed enormous. I must say that a wolf cutting wood is sort of strange. I stared into the woods to look for my first prey, a tree trunk admiring pig. I spotted some iron in the darkness of a cave. I carefully walked over to it, being careful that no mobs were following me. I wandered through the woods, following a smell I particularly loved. A flock of sheep had no chance against me. On the second day, I discovered how dangerous berries were. After seeing a family of foxes, that's when I met her, my companion on this adventure. She showed me a nice hill where I could live, so I immediately got to work. After making an invisible chest, I decided to start digging up my den. On the third day, I got inspired by the foxes, so I decided to upgrade my dirt den into a large tree. As you can imagine, this required quite a bit of wood cutting. On day four, I moved all my belongings from the old den to the new one. I decided to make the most of my small size by going mining. Being one block high, I had the advantage of only mining on level 12, which meant that I covered more ground much faster. I arrived at a lava lake and I was so happy to find some diamonds. On day 5, I literally spent the whole day working on the tree because, trust me, doing this tree so early on in the game was really, really hard. But it was totally worth it. On day 6 to 7, I made a little entrance to my tree den and then I started working on the leaves. I put these days together because I was basically just doing the same thing. Clearly, the most interesting part of these days was when I accidentally dug out the wrong dirt block and died. <laughs> Here's the finished result. It doesn't look very nice from where I'm looking, but my friend Bella was very happy about it. On day 8, I put on my farmer's boots and I started making an enclosure for getting some cows and I also did a bit of farming. Stuck Bella, wished me good night, and I was off to bed. On day 9, I spent the whole day rearranging all my items into barrels. On day 10, I got some wool and I decided to make a bed like my descendants, the dogs. And then I finished off the cow enclosure with a tree. On day 11, I said hello to Bella and then I came upon a sleeping fox. I decided to go explore my area to see if there was anything interesting. That's when I came upon a village. I entered one of the houses and I discovered a creature I had always wanted to see, a human. Oh, and I also took all the blocks from his house. On day 12, I was astonished to find a miniature human. I also saw a weird creature in the trees, which I think you call bird. I saw my descendant's foe, the cat, but honestly, I thought they were quite cute. 
On day 13, I continued my travels and found the city of New York in the distance. The next day, I found an abandoned portal and looted the chest, and then I took a lunch break, and later on, I decided it was time for a snack break. When it was time for tea, I killed some more sheep, and then I realized I had orphaned a poor baby sheep, so I just stayed there, not knowing what to do. If you're wondering what a wolf riding a horse looks like, you will know very soon. On day 15, I spent the whole day finding some cows and bringing them back safely to the enclosure. On day 16, I did quite a bit of terraforming because I kept taking damage by falling off the hill, so I made a little slope. On day 17, I mainly did some farming, wood cutting, terraforming, etc, etc. The next few days, I went back down mining and I made a time lapse because I know a lot of you enjoy just seeing me mining. I realized that as I was only mining on level 12, I actually found way more diamonds than when I measured two blocks high. So if any of you are interested in knowing how to do that technique, even with the normal, you know, two block high player, um, I might do a tutorial on my Instagram too. So probably this week or next week. Because even without having to be a wolf, there is a technique to only be able to mine on level 12 or one level. At one point, I arrived in a cave and in the darkness, I saw the head of a creeper. So of course, being super brave, I went right at it and killed it. Not just kidding, I just continued on my way. I then started hearing a lot of zombie sounds above me, so I carefully went up. I was actually quite scared of ending up under and all the zombies pouring on top of me. But I mean, I expect there would be cobblestone, so I would see. Nevertheless, I found it and I arrived on top and there was actually a spider spawner. I killed off all the zombies and blocked off the entrance so that everything would be nice and safe. I was really glad I had found this spawner because it meant that I could use it for XP. On day 20, I came across this creeper and I did not want to die because I had 25 levels. Um, so I just made a mess. Of course, I had to block off the hole and then I decided to have a little stroll in the forest. Only to meet up with the worst surprise creeper I have ever had. He was just hiding behind that plant. I could not see him. But to end up the day on a good note, I was able to make the enchanting table. On day 21, I spotted the fox again and luckily there was one not too far. I tried giving them both berries, hoping that they would have a baby, but I guess they were too far, so I had to find a new solution. I stopped sneaking and one of them ran off uh, in the wrong direction, making it super hard to get them close to each other. He even went off in the river to kill some salmon, so I clearly did not know what to do. By the end of the day, I decided I would put one of the foxes in a hole and I felt a bit bad when he just, you know, fell in the hole. <laughs> On day 22, I found the escapee and I started digging out a tunnel um, to reach the other fox. And this took the whole day, but I managed and I was able to breed them. I had to destroy my whole farm because I wanted to become the first wolf to ever build a house. This wouldn't be a huge house or a beautiful house, but it would be my house. I used the materials that I had, like spruce wood and stone, and of course the terracotta that I had stolen from the village. Here are a few facts on wolves. 
In the wild, they can live up to 13 years. Wolves live in caves, cavities, and between rocks, and they are quite social animals that have a specific hierarchy within their packs. So the dominant male and female pair, called the alpha wolves, rule the pack. You probably already knew these facts, but did you know that unlike many other species, the whole wolf pack raises the pups together? And a funny fact is that wolves are actually not very efficient hunters. Um, so that is why they always hunt as a pack. And for those interested, wolf in French is loup. On day 27, the wandering trader spawned, so I was able to get some leads, which meant that I could bring back the fox pup. Oh, and this little guy was so lazy. <laughs> I struggled to get him to um, get up, so I tried, you know, removing some leaves and everything. It was really, <laughs> really hard, but totally worth it. I now had a cute companion. On day 28, I went to get the second pup from the fox den. He was even worse than his brother, but I quickly figured out that I just had to pull on the lead hard enough. When I said I quickly figured it out, that's not true, it took me a bit of time. I ended up the day with a bit of relaxing fishing. And then of course, I realized that I was not recording when I got my first enchantment, and as it was a really good one, it was Fortune 3, I felt super, super bad. I thought that people might think whatever, so I just left um, the whole mining session for you. I don't know why, but I always feel bad when I forget to record. I'm so scared that people are gonna think something about me, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I know it's not a big deal, but I'm always worried that you will think that I did it on purpose or... <laughs> ah, da, da. Silly tootsie. Nevertheless, don't worry, this was the only time I forgot to record, so I think, yeah, it just stayed in my head, so I was extremely careful after that. I was now able to craft myself an entire diamond armor. This is just so satisfying to do. I enchanted my diamond pickaxe with efficiency 4, and I only got efficiency 4 sad tootsie noises. <laughs> and then it was time for the most interesting part of that video, <laughs> which is called AFK and getting XP. Being the pro player I am, um, I thought, why not make a mob spawner? Like that, I could, you know, get XP from the mob spawner and the zombie spawner. And then I remembered that I was underground <laughs> and that it would not work because there were mobs spawning everywhere. Yeah, I am a pro, okay? So my main enchantments were, for example, protection 4 on my helmet. Uh, I also got looting 2 on my sword, but it had sharpness 3, which wasn't very good. And at one point I went into my AFK hole and I started taking so much damage, I almost died. Like this, whew, that was scary. And then I got this amazing bow. I was so, so happy, you can't imagine. Day 45 was the big day. I was going to go into the nether. I went into the portal and I realized that I had spawned right next to a bastion, which was awesome. And then I saw the hoglins and I went back in. <laughs> Being extremely brave, I decided to destroy the whole portal um, to basically build it further off, hoping that it wouldn't spawn near the hoglins again. And I almost set fire to my bed. On day 46, I built the portal again a bit further off, I rounded up all my courage and went in and went back out immediately. <laughs> courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Yeah, that's what I kept telling me. <laughs> Come on, come on Tootsie, you can do it, you can do it. I know I'm not in hardcore, but if you're wondering why I didn't want to die, it was because I still had things to enchant and I did not want to start all over again. Thankfully, the hoglins were being hunted down by the piglins, so I had time to build a nice and safe cobblestone base. From days 47 to 48, I decided I wanted to raid this bastion. I was going to use my small size to slipped 
I was going to use my small size to slip through the walls and avoid as much danger as possible. I was able to easily shoot at some piglins and I slowly made my way down to the treasure. I had to urgently get rid of the magma cubes because they would be the ones that would push me into the lava. I made my way over to the spawner and destroyed it. I started shooting at all the remaining magma cubes and then I thought I saw a glow squid. Yes, very, <laughs> very logical. If you're wondering why I get a kind of subtitle with written um, identity, it's because I'm using the identity mod. When I arrived at the treasure, I started stealing the gold blocks and I could hear the piglins getting super, super angry. Clearly, being one block high was a great advantage in this situation. When I'd gotten all the gold blocks, I made my way back up to explore the nether a bit further. On day 49, my goal was to get as far away from the crimson forest as possible, so I decided to go to a warp forest to start getting some enderpearls. I was delighted to find a nether fortress, but then I realized there were so many mobs on it. So many. Maybe you feel like I'm exaggerating, but I have never seen a nether fortress with so many monsters on it. And with my four hearts, I think I was going to have to say goodbye to my levels. I barely approached the fortress that Ablaze was already attacking me, so I had to find another way. And clearly, the only way was to make a tunnel over. The motto for this video should be, better safe than sorry. <laughs> But yeah, I slowly and surely made my way down to the fortress. I used my wolf skills to make a little tunnel, being very, very careful. It was actually a great opportunity to get loads of bones from the wither skeletons. It looks very quick edited like that, but it took me ages, really, like the blazes were attacking me all the time, but finally I managed to get closer to the spawner and I started collecting some blaze rods. An enderman also attacked me and it was quite scary because he could sometimes hit me through the tunnel. After this misadventure, I decided to go start killing a few endermen to get ender pearls, and I realized that to make potions I needed the nether warts. Once again, I had to be careful and discreet. I used my stealth to sneak under the nether fortress. The mobs had no clue of my presence, and after quite a while, I managed to find the nether warts. And my game sounds are not aligned great. <laughs> I went back to kill off some endermen, thinking that I would be safe, and they could actually hit me through the netherrack, which was horrible. <laughs> But thankfully, I had all I needed, and I could finally return home. Now that I had some bones from the wither skeletons, I decided I would tame Bella and show her around my house. To end off the day, I went back down to the zombie spawner to start getting some more XP and do some more enchanting. On day 57, I found some more wolves, which meant that now I had a pack, and Bella and I were the alpha wolves. Welcome Billy and Barry. I chose Barry because Rake loves using that name, so yeah. <laughs> I found another wolf that I named Brenda and I presented her to the pack. I decided I would each get them a different colored collar, so I tried to <laughs> I tried to ride a horse and it just it looks it looks special. <laughs> so Billy was blue. Barry was yellow and Brenda was light grey. On day 60, I decided I would restore the farming area and Mr. Bob the Pig came along <laughs> as soon as I had potatoes in my hand. So I decided to let him live in the house. I had originally made that house if ever I was going to adopt a human, but for the moment I didn't mind if Bob lived in it. 
My infinite water source was not looking very nice, so I decided to build a well around it, um, because I thought it would maybe make it look a bit more interesting. On day 61, I happily let the pack run after a skeleton, and poor Elliot had fallen in the well. Today was the big day. I was going to adopt a human. I was extremely excited. Since I was a little cub, I had always wished to adopt a human because I had heard that they were just fun and kind creatures. I tried to lure them in a boat, but the members of my pack kept getting caught into the boat. I accidentally caught two humans in my boat, uh, so I had to get rid of one and I completely forgot that there was the iron golem. <laughs> And clearly, with four hearts, I couldn't understand why he didn't instantly kill me, but it probably meant that my armor was quite good. So yeah, I had to run off as far as possible from the adoption center, um, and the iron golem was actually following me. I ended up by just killing him. On day 62, I reserved a human for when I would be coming the next time, but I had to go home because having my pack with me would make things too difficult. I did find two very friendly donkeys on the way, and I named one Johnny and the other one Cash. We all made our way home, and I just thought it was so fun traveling with the whole pack. I really, really enjoyed that day. I started connecting all the rivers together so that it would be much easier to bring back the human. On day 63, I arrived back at the adoption center and I lured a human up with a profession block and we were off. Time for a few facts on humans, so they have a life expectancy of around 72 years, um, and I think they are quite social um, creatures. Okay, so now it's time for a few more serious ones. More than half of a human's bones are actually located in the hands, wrists, and feet. Every second, a human's body produces 25 million new cells, which means that in 15 seconds, they will have produced more cells than there are people in the United States. When we arrived home, the human decided to become a farmer, so I gave him loads of seeds, and he actually just all threw them away, so yeah, and he just walked off when I said that. Bob was very interested in the carrots, as was this other pig, so I decided to bring Bob a new companion. Boris had eaten a few too many carrots, so he struggled to get through the door. Johnny and Cash were still waiting outside my den, so I decided it was time to make them an enclosure. I wanted to keep it cute, but simple, so I made a little roofed area and then I just made a basic enclosure. The next day, I finished off the enclosure and I was able to bring the two donkeys to their new home. On day 67, I started decorating a bit by making some small potted plants, uh, and then the wandering trader spawned, so of course I had to let my pack have fun with him <laughs> and his llamas, um, and then I did the typical thing I always do, which is to bone meal the ground, because I find that grass looks nice, but when you are a wolf, it's not a good idea because I just couldn't see anything. On days 68 to 70, I did some more mining, and at one point I came upon a spider spawner. It was right next to a lava lake, and this was pretty cool because in the chests I found a saddle. I was then able to do some more enchanting, and once again, I got efficiency 4 on my diamond pickaxe, and just that. From day 71 to 73, I continued mining, and I just got super, super lucky because I found a second spider spawner, and I also found some diamonds. Um, and in this spider spawner, I got some name tags. 
I put together my sharpness 3 and sharpness 4 swords to make a sharpness 5 one, which I'm actually not even going to use, you'll see. I used the name tags to rename Bella and Human and he seemed very, very happy of his name tag. I started preparing some potions but I still needed some phantom membrane and that night they spawned. I thought it would be a good idea if I let the pack um, attack the monsters with me, but you will see that it was not. Everything was going fine, but what happened was that suddenly a huge group of zombies all came from nowhere. Um, maybe there was a spawner or something, but there were so many zombies. And then I saw wolf slain by zombie, wolf slain by zombie, and I couldn't believe it. I had lost my pack. And I was really feeling terrible, like, really not good. And the zombies kept coming, so I had to keep killing them and killing them because I couldn't sleep. Because then it would just say there were monsters nearby. And then the next day, a zombie killed my villager. And he died instantly because it was daytime. So, you can imagine how I was feeling at that moment. I know Minecraft is a game and nothing in it really matters, but I can promise you that I was um, a bit disappointed and maybe a bit more than a bit. <laughs> to brighten up the mood, look at that phantom struggling in the tree. And let's all appreciate that satisfying moment of killing a creeper. As you can see, I unlocked the creeper identity and I actually really wanted to do like a kind of 100 day as a shapeshifter video, but another great YouTuber called Corinthius, I think you pronounce it like that, did it, so I just didn't want to take his idea. But what happened just before was that um, Johnny and Cash managed to get out of their pen, but I thankfully found Johnny, so I went to get him a girlfriend and they had a cute baby mule. The loss of human was very hard on me and I missed his company, so I decided I would get two of his friends. As for my wolves, the only one that was remaining was Bella because she was still sitting inside my house. I looked through the forest for some other wolves, but in vain. On day 77, I happily bought back the second human from the adoption center and I even found two lovely horses that I bought home also. And I expect you've understood by now that it is impossible to maneuver a boat when you're a wolf because you just cannot see above it. One of the humans had a profession which meant that he couldn't care less about all the other profession blocks, so I was just hoping he wouldn't get killed by a zombie. There is a French bedtime story called Le Petit Poussé and the reason I'm talking to you about that is because this little boy in the story, he's lost in the woods and he puts some little white stones on the floor to, you know, find his way home and I thought that bringing the villager over with some potatoes really reminded me of that. He's just finding his way home with potatoes. And I know someone covets potatoes. On day 79, I prepared for the Ender Dragon fight, and by the end of the day, I decided to ride Johnny, and it was quite funny, honestly. From days 80 to 82, I sent my first Eye of Ender into the air, and I set off on the journey of a lifetime. And I don't know about you guys, but each time I go to kill the Ender Dragon, I'm always scared I forgot something. And in this case, I was so scared that I wouldn't have enough food, even though I had 40 potatoes, but I still decided to kill some animals along the way. By the end of day 82, I finally found the stronghold. On day 83, I travelled around the stronghold trying to find the portal and at one point 
There was a creeper behind an iron door, <laughs> so I opened it several times, but I didn't have the guts to go in, you know, I was just too close to that ender dragon fight. I didn't want to ruin everything. But finally, after looking around quite a bit, I found this portal, and of course, guess what? There were no eyes. <laughs> Thankfully, I had lows on me. Day 84, I filled up the portal with ender eyes, and after a moment's hesitation, I jumped in. I learned from the mistakes I'd made in the other videos, so I immediately drank some slow falling potion. I carefully started taking down all the end crystals, trying not to look at any endermen. I managed to easily destroy the first crystal that was in a cage, but the second one I just couldn't. I tried again and again and again. And a great tip I can give is when you're not, when you're struggling too much at something, just go do something else and then come back. And most of the time it works better the second time around. And look at that, it did work. I then started tearing up to destroy the crystals that were super high <laughs> and I actually realized that the um, like the pillar I was climbing up on I had actually already destroyed the crystal. I almost jumped off without any slow falling potion but at the last moment I realized and I drank it, thankfully. When it was time to hit the ender dragon I chose my axe because it had a higher attack damage but the issue is as I was only one block tall, I really, really struggled to actually hit the dragon. I had to really get the perfect position. Finally, the dragon was defeated. I went to get the egg and it actually fell into the portal, so I jumped in. I looked around everywhere and couldn't find it. Um, <laughs> so maybe you can tell me if you know where it could have gone, because then I went back in and had a look everywhere and no sign of the egg. <laughs> so that is the egg mystery. When I came back out, Mr. Wandering Trader was waiting for me, <laughs> but not for long. And then from days 86 to 87, I made my way home. And I must say, it does feel great to be safe and home. Billy, Barry, Brenda and Human were still a lot on my mind. So I decided I would make them some statues to remember them. I made these statues to honor them and to thank them for keeping me company and for just making me happy throughout these 100 days. I wanted to point out that the villager statue I got the inspiration from the internet and that Ray came along to see um, what I was doing when I was editing and then he saw the statue and he said Oh no, I did the same in my episode 1 of the SMP. <laughs> so yeah, nobody copied nobody. I mean, like, we, we didn't copy each other, it's just we got the inspiration from a build on the internet that was really cool. As I had a lot of wool, I decided I would make some cute mushrooms. They're really, really simple, but I thought they, you know, added a nice cozy feel to my area. From days 94 to 99, I decided to go back to the stronghold because I really wanted to get an elytra. It was really handy to be a wolf because I could fit in the end portals super easily. And then there was the typical bridging from island to island and then stressing <laughs> when you send an ender pearl. Well, maybe I'm the only one who stresses, but <laughs> yeah, I've messed up a few times with the ender pearls. 
The first end city I found did not have a boat, but I still made my way up to get some loot. That just reminded me that someone wasn't very happy with me in the comments when I said uh, the boat. <laughs> But then, not too far off, I found a second ant city, but this time it had a boat. Of course, I struggled a little bit <laughs> to try and kill off the two shulker boxes, but once it was done, I just had to make my little bridge over and I could get the elytra. There was just that little shulker remaining, but he did not last long. <laughs> And in one of the chests, I got this crazy diamond pickaxe. With my elytra, I flew over to the little portal thingy <laughs> and almost got killed by an enderman. This was horrible. Really, you cannot imagine how I was feeling in the moment. But for some reason, I survived. Um, and then when I came back in the overworld, <laughs> I had forgotten to put a boat. But that was actually all in my favor because I arrived home super fast. And I was able to try out the Elytra on day 100, which was so much fun. Thank you so much for watching, and I wanted to tell you that you mean a lot to me. You make me very happy being so supportive as you are. I mean, guys, I really, really love you.